everyone, I'm Simon. Welcome back to another episode of uh, the Bar Manager Stories where I was taking on my first bar as a manager in Patea, Thailand. Uh, we left it that uh, Frozen was now the new Mama San for the bar and she was on a salary and I was on a salary. Everything was set. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I think I found myself alone that evening from the last episode and I'd won a bit of money the night before coming second in the pool contest. So I had a wander around walking street if I remember rightly and ended up at some disco nightclub. The Thailand nightlife uh, <laughs> can be amazing. But I'd uh, had a wander along walking street I believe and got some street food, some Thai food, um, ended up at a club, got a little bit drunk um, and I think I found myself some young lady aerobics instructor and I was keen to go to the, the, the new bar and even though it wasn't open to the public and I did have a room there that was going to be set up um, to try out the environment of that room in the bar and the jacuzzi <laughs> and a good night was had by all <laughs> oh dear anyway next day eventually got up and uh, was in a wasn't in my room I was in the bar uh, wandered back room I think I got breakfast on the way back and uh, got back to my room and probably collapsed again and went to sleep again but a knock on the door of my room, Soy 4, must be mid-morning, 10, 11 o'clock, and one of the girls from the soapy massage down below had come up to wake me up. And Sue, one of the, the Thai lady that owned the bar, etc., wanted to see me. So up I get, shower, change, downstairs to the soapy massage. Usual free coffee. And Sue um, said that... Uh, Later that day, there was a going to be the bed was going to be delivered to my room, a new bed for that room, um, and she wanted to catch up with me about three-ish in the afternoon. Why wake me up? Yeah, about three in the afternoon down at the bar, um, but not to bring the bike. Okay, that was strange. Yep, no problem. Had my coffee, <laughs> sort of awake then. I had a wander across to the beach and a wander around. Gave uh, Frozen a ring and uh, told her that a bit of a meeting in the afternoon. So I hadn't mentioned Frozen, but. <laughs> and I asked her, you know, if she had any chance to talk to any girls. She was actually said she spoke to a couple, but she was going out for the next few evenings, searching around, see if she, see if she could poach some girls from other bars, friends of hers. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned it in other videos before. The girls in beer bars, the go-go bars, they get paid monthly. And quite often, they're either they'll get bored and they'll move bar at the end of the month. So you'll see a gang of girls walking around end of the month, going to other bars to see if there's any better money to be had, or if the bar looks busier than where they're working. They sort of migrate from bar to bar, and that's quite a regular thing. Um, I believe that's probably the same today. You know, they, they work in a bar and get bored. They don't like maybe some of the staff or the owners, and they just move. Um, and it is a regular thing. So, Frozen would have to try and tap into that timing, see if she could get a group of girls. That would be brilliant. Sometimes they'll stick to the whatever Mamasan they're with. And they'll all move together so it's going to be a tricky one for Frozen to get these girls I didn't really apart from the, the girls around the bars that I drank in I couldn't really go in and say you know do you want a job do you want a job <laughs> it's not really the done thing it's best to leave it to the Mama San and Thai people to sort out the girls and uh, I was lucky that Frozen came along as the Mama San really lucky worked out well anyway so Later on that day, 
I made my way down to the bar mid afternoon, three ish, half two, three ish. Uh, Frozen was already there, Sue was there, and I walked in, uh, and there, now as you walk in the bar, from the, the lane, you've got to step up onto the pavement, come through the double sliding patio doors, then there's a step down into the bar, it's about a six inch step. But just inside the bar, inside the door, was a brand new uh, black Honda Wave 110cc scooter, bottom of the line, very basic, no electric start, and a helmet, sat there. And as I walked in, Sue, straight away, there's a key for the bike, that's your bike, I've got a spare key, there's a helmet, that's your new company bike. Um, now, not having an electric start was like, oh, <laughs> that's a bit of luxury. So that's why she didn't want me to take the bike, because there's my new bike. And this was going to turn out to be the bar bike that everyone borrowed and used. Um, and later on, through that bar and the next bar, uh, at two in the morning, three in the morning when the bar shut, if the bike was there and I wasn't around, then one of the staff would grab the bike and put it inside the bar for safety. Um, and that happened over the next two years, the bike chucked inside, which was good. You could leave it outside, but it would probably get knocked about or uh, disappear. So there's my new bike. And then Sue gave me another key and she said, two keys, one for her, one for me. Go look room, up, and there's a new lock on the door, a Yale lock and the original lock inside brand new double bed new mattress lovely and a quilt set and pillows and everything she thought of everything and a wardrobe i was set everything done so that was good back down and she said you can move today or tomorrow give your other bike key back to the cashier move your stuff down and you live here now cool bike room i'm on salary this was like heaven you know, I'd found, I think I'd found the perfect uh, way of staying in Thailand. Managing a beer bar. What was ahead of me? <laughs> oh dear. Yes. And quite a few people asked me, would I do it again? No, I wouldn't. Um, Frozen was chatting away to Sue, and uh, the builders were pretty much done. Just a couple of little bits left. Sue had also got a desk put into the office upstairs. Uh, two desks but only one computer for her I didn't get a computer she uh, handed me some discs as well on that uh, meeting let's just say there were lots of music discs for the second hand computer system that was suddenly appeared that suddenly appeared in the DJ booth and she said there's a load of music that computer's in now it's her son's old computer so you can sort that out okay great it's been hooked up to a speaker system, basic speaker system, good enough for the bar. Um, all that we're waiting now is a couple of big large TVs and the pool table. And Sue said that that's coming in the next two days. TVs will be done, hooked up to a TV box sports package. Proper one for the bar, all paid and all above board. Uh, and the pool table, they would all come in the next couple of days. And uh, the builders would finish. And that would be it. Sign appeared as well the next day. Plastic, big sign with lights behind it, like a tin box. Soy BJ Fun Bar. Brilliant. So, a couple of days later, it was going to be all done, which means opening. Over those next couple of days, um, Frozen and Sue spoke a lot. Frozen managed to get about four girls that was all to sign up we, there was a lot of talk it was a sports bar so talk about uniforms for girls and because it was down a lane off walking street we needed girls up on walking street if you go to walking street in Patera, you'll you walk down you'll see a group of three or four girls in a different uniform with placards saying the price of the beer or um, you know, a happy hour and offers and things. So we were going to need some girls up in Walking Street to, I say, drag the customers down, but try and persuade the customers to come down the lane and come to the bar. Um, this 
was roughly June so we were looking in the next week or so was June so it's low season and my thoughts at the time was if you have loads and loads of girls on salary you're not going to get the customers in on low season you're going to struggle even back 15 years ago um, I think there was more people in low season back then than there is now so I didn't know and I talked to Sue about you know we're not going to make money if you get loads of girls on salary in low season however you need loads of girls to get the customers that you can get down the lane and she indicated that she was happy to overpay to get the right girls and more girls to get the bar started she was happy for three months you know not to make a profit even if it cost her a bit of money but to get the bar going which was great absolutely perfect Frozen found as I say four maybe five girls we talked about uniforms and things and my idea with the sports bar was very small white shorts and a like a football t-shirt and maybe a white baseball hat with a top bit cut out so it's you know one of those like tennis baseball or whatever that sort of thing and Sue agreed and said she would sort it but she then also said let's have a soft opening we're not going to have a big launch let's get the bar open which was a bit of a shock as in in a few days time or maybe the weekend let's get the bar open cashier is one one of her cashiers from uh, her other ventures she says she's got in place security we've got the boy run and his missus is the cleaner um, so having a cashier one of her other staff is going to be the barman bar girl this happened to be a young lady called Toy some of you might remember from other stories who was a tomboy so Toy was going to be the bar girl so also had a another girl who was a DJ at a go-go bar who worked for her part-time said that she would, on a Friday Saturday night this girl <coughs> again another tomboy didn't work in the go-go bar she only worked three or four nights in the go-go bar she was going to come in and DJ on a Friday and Saturday night for four weeks to get things going and Sue was paying her a good salary so we had a DJ we had a barmaid we had the cashier we had the mama sound we had four or five girls before we've even, even opened so this was great and it, by the time those couple of days had gone past the TV set up the pool table in um, everything was ready midweek and Sue was saying look the weekend let's open let's start on the Saturday and she got some placards made for the girls to hold out in walking street um, that you could change the numbers and things on for the prices and she got a load made no uniforms appeared and Sue then said that to get the first couple of weeks get it going she was going to send down 10 girls from the soapy massage now if you check back at some of my other stories you'll see there's stories about all this and some of these girls individually you just got to dig through my library to find some of these stories but anyway she sent down I think it was 10 maybe even more but 10 girls she was going to send down for the first week or so on some nights but more girls would come up and down which was great you have different girls popping in great for customers she was going to send all these girls down and so we were going to open on Saturday as a soft opening and see what happened and see how we could get on all the draft beer was in in the bar the companies are happy to supply with the machines and everything we had fridges we had freezers all with locks on for beer freezers fridges uh, all the spirits were in cages with locks had a tilt everything had padlocks on for security at night now the rooms we had as I mentioned we call them short time rooms we couldn't let those rooms out for whole nights for people because there was only one door to the premises and that would mean security guards sitting down in the bar 24 hours a day so it just wasn't worth opening as a hotel um, and those rooms were really were for people um, 
aerobics lessons, um, people who wanted to maybe have a room for two or three hours to relax um, when they're a heavy night out around Walking Street. <laughs> yes. So there was a cleaner for those rooms. The cashier would handle the the uh, the money for I think it was about three hundred baht for these rooms for the if you wanted to sleep for two or three hours. And I don't quite know how, but Sue had got the message out. Um, even when we opened the first night, Sue had got the message out to a lot of girls around, and there was, I believe six free six rooms plus the security guards room plus my room so there were six rooms I think it was for available <coughs> and Sue had got the message out that these rooms were available and that there was a kickback so what she was doing if girls had come in from other bars or from wherever it's 300 baht for the room for that period of time but the cashier would give 50 baht back to the girl if they didn't work in our bar so if they were from outside, there was a kickback. So that made those rooms very popular from day one and very busy. Now that, I'll, we'll talk about it another time, but anyway, that was really good, having rooms, very good. Um, week went by, everything was in place, Frozen was... Uh, still trying to find more girls but she was ready no uniforms placards everything ready so we'll end it there the next one is the opening the soft opening but everything was in place and I hadn't really done a lot to set it all up Sue had done it all the builders but you can imagine setting a bar up all these things if you were doing it yourself as a foreigner, if you were renting a bar or buying a bar, all these little things you've got to set up and get ready. Hmm, a lot of work, a lot of work. So next video, opening. The, I suppose, first official day I was a bar manager, live. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please, thumbs up, share, and uh, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next one. The grand opening. Soft opening. Bye.